2015 was a big year for the industry. SpaceX successfully launched and landed a rocket. Jared Fogel, the infamous subway spokesman, was sentenced to 15 years in prison. And Radio Shack filed for federal bankruptcy. The tech giant from the 20s that mainstreamed the TRS-80 microcomputer finally shuttered its doors. But why? Why did this mega company that started from a tiny shoestring store go out of business? Well, sit back, relax, and let's dive into the rabbit hole that is Radio Shack. Boy, did I get plastered last night. I can't even turn on an ordinary radio. Luckily, Radio Shack sells these three extraordinary cube radios by Realistic. You see, all I have to do is touch this bar and I get FM here, AM here, constant weather reports here. These cube radios are available only at a nearby Radio Shack from just $9.95. You know, that's the first decent break I've had. Radio Shack, the nationwide supermarket of sound. In 1919, Norton Hinckley and Dave Tandy founded Radio Shack on a low budget, originally starting a shoe store named Hinckley Tandy Leather Company. The store generally sold shoe parts and repair supplies to other sellers in the Fort Worth area. Through the Great Depression and the decades that followed, Hinckley Tandy Leather Company would soon see quick growth after World War II, when Tandy's oldest son, Charles Tandy, took over the business after seeing the rising importance of leather craft while in the Navy. A clash between Tandy and Hinckley, however, would soon split the company between the partners. Hinckley kept the shoe business and left while the Tandy started Tandy Leather Company. The company eventually grew at a significant rate that by the 50s, they sold the company to a New England firm named General American Industries. Tandy himself eventually took the role of the company chairman in 1959, changing the name of the corporation to Tandy Corporation and moving its headquarters to Fort Worth, Texas. Now we take a 30-year step back. In 1921, London-born Bostonian brothers Theodore and Milton Deutschmann started a retail and mail order store named Radio Shack, giving it the name due to the purpose of their store, which was essentially to supply ship radio officers. Over the decades that followed, Radio Shack would grow to a large handful of locations across the Northeast. In 1939, they published their first product catalog, and just eight years later, they opened America's first audio showroom. The company did really well until the early 60s when they almost went bankrupt. In 1963, however, Radio Shack was sold to Tandy Corporation. As time continued, Tandy put more focus on the electronic aspects of his company until 1975, when the Tandy Corporation began to only sell electronics. In 1977, just a year before Tandy's death, the company introduced and began selling the TRS-80 microcomputer. And at $200 off, it's a great value. Select from Radio Shack's huge program library to aid your children's education. Plan your personal and household budget. A fully wired and, at least at the time, very impressive piece of technology. In the years between 1977 and 81, over 200,000 units were sold. Radio Shack grew increasingly through the 80s, bringing computers into office and home spaces throughout America. In 1981, they named a new CEO, a man named John Roach, taking the place of interim CEO and personal friend of Tandy's Philip North. In the 90s, Radio Shack exploded in popularity, selling more wireless phones than any other retailer at the time. In 1999, Len Roberts was named CEO, developing cellular subscription services and in-store boutiques for Tandy Corporation. A year later, in 2000, the company officially changed its name to Radio Shack, dropping all of its private label brands as well. Things, however, began to look bad at this point. Throughout the 2000s, CEOs resigned and were succeeded multiple times. Losses were mounting, eventually manifesting themselves until February 5th, 2015, when Radio Shack officially filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. It was officially over. Radio Shack was bankrupt after almost 100 years of operating. Fine. 
finally. A computer so easy to use, it really is a home computer. So easy to learn, it guarantees success. All I needed was 15 minutes at Radio Shack with the Tandy 1000 RL, and I could really use this computer. The RL actually taught us how to use its 24 built-in home organizing solutions. Now the whole family enjoys using the RL to communicate and manage our everyday home activities. Come in today and spend 15 minutes that can change your life. Only at Radio Shack, America's technology store, creating new standards. Radio Shack's failure to stay alive in the modern market was for a variety of reasons. Its economic collapse really began to take shape in the early 2000s, after it had rebounded from financial issues in the early 90s due to closing multiple destructive offshoot brands, most notably the Incredible Universe chain, which cost the seller around $130 million in losses. However, that era of prosperity was soon to have its issues, namely as the 2000s trudged on. One of the most notable issues which seems to befall a huge portion of companies in the modern era is Radio Shack's online competitors. Although Radio Shack had a website and accordingly scrapped their physical product catalogs, it was not enough for the company, which seems to have focused most of its energy on its physical locations. Coupled with the fact that the products they sold were limited in their nature, the store had a difficult time going up against major sellers like Amazon, especially as the 2000s continued onwards. Another reason for the company's fall from grace is really what brought them up to begin with, the cell phone market. Cell phones accounted for a large portion of the company's sales throughout the 2000s, meaning that if they were to fail financially in that department, they would suffer tremendous losses. And of course, they did lose. A lot. And we are calling it iPhone. Today In 2007, Steve Jobs brought forth the iPhone to the public a revolutionary device at the time, changing the market significantly in the years to come and putting Apple above its competition. Unfortunately for Radio Shack, this meant sellers would reduce payment to the company due to the rise of wireless operators, wrecking Radio Shack's profit margins. This is arguably the biggest reason for the company's downfall. And of course, major financial and managerial issues were another big cause of the company's failure. It's reported that in the nine-year period between 2005 and 2014, the CEO was changed seven different times, as I alluded to earlier. Issues with management on store levels began to pop up and profits were slipping fast. As the late 2000s rolled out, so did Radio Shack's chances of staying alive in the modern competitive market. Stores were empty and quickly began to shutter their doors. A loan of $250 million was eventually taken in 2013 from a company known as Salus, a large investment company at that time, which would inevitably dig the grave for Radio Shack. Salus continued to pressure Radio Shack until late 2014, when a failed holiday season meant Radio Shack would finally file for bankruptcy in early 2015. To this day, around 400 stores remain open, versus the 4,300 North American stores open in 2014. Price ever at Radio Shack on the most powerful transportable cellular phone system. Just $7.99 when you sign up with Radio Shack's authorized cellular phone carrier. Go where you wanna go. There's nothing else to buy, and it's ready to go wherever you go. Call when you wanna call. Use in your car or go portable and take it along. Radio Shack's complete transportable cellular phone system. Just $7.99 only at Radio Shack. The technology. Radio Shack's fall as a company was at some point inevitable. The company saw aggressive success in the latter 1900s. However, with the rise of the internet and the smartphone, Radio Shack was soon to fail. Of course, it was not the only major company from the 1900s to fail in the 2000s. Other stores like Kmart, Sears, and Blockbuster also come to mind. However, Radio Shack was very impactful, in a way changing the cons consumer electronic scene for good. Unfortunately, as with the rest of the companies listed, a mix of poor management, major financial mistakes, and a lack of proper competitiveness meant Radio Shack was not able to stay afloat. The really ironic thing about the whole situation was that Radio Shack was hoping to restore their tanking profits by 2015, the year that they ended up filing for bankruptcy.